Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at Forex dash trading dash unlock dot com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstat, Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year to you guys as well. So we uh, we haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks, man. We've had a few things going on. We got new all time highs, of course, in the market, man. We got uh, a little bit of potential rotation going on with the tech stocks. We got quite a strong ADP number this morning, Teddy. Uh, where do you kick off in the world of forex this morning? Well, I think we should talk about the U.S. dollar yen. We finally hit the 116 price target yesterday, so um, you know 122 is my longer term objective. And uh, I'm riding that way, baby. I think that uh, yesterday's rally definitely showed that when it comes to that currency cross, the, bit, the bull is definitely off and running for 2022. I don't think this is a spike that you're seeing. I think you're going to see the trend continue over the next couple of weeks, especially with the way the 30-year uh, and the 10-year sold off over the last two days. Now, what is driving... In your opinion, Teddy, the, the the action on this pairing, because I, you know, getting ready to talk to you, I take a look at some of the Forex pairings, right? I'm always watching them, but especially on Wednesdays, getting ready to chat with you. And not a ton of action in terms of some chop in there across of mm -hmm. some of the pairings. But man, the dollar yen, it is, uh, that was the one I was ready to talk to you most about, because I think that's probably the biggest move we've had on some sure. of the pairings, as opposed to just kind of some of them chopping around a little bit, like uh, the euro or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the, one of the reasons for this is that um, the yen is very sensitive to our interest rate environment, which is a factor of currency pricing, as well as the oil market. So if you look at how oil rallied Monday and Tuesday and the, and the bonds in the 10-year, they tanked, especially very hard yesterday, you know, pushing some extremes. So that's where you got that big elevated rally yesterday. And you can tell by today that oil is up slightly. The bonds are, are up slightly a couple. Like, I think they were up like 10, 12 ticks when I looked at them like 20 minutes ago. So they're kind of like right now they're chopping around and kind of just stabilizing. So I think that's why you're seeing the little sell off off of this new, a new move high from yesterday. So you can kind of see that those relationships where they go, the U.S. dollar yen is kind of going that same direction. So we have oil numbers today. So if we see oil all of a sudden rally and start pressuring resistance, and if definitely if you see the 30 year and the 10 year start to hit support again, I would expect to see the U.S. dollar yen be challenging the highs from yesterday very, very quickly. So let's take that opportunity to jump over to crude. Uh, quite a run, man. I mean, you look at where we've been, Teddy, and I know you know, but you're talking about a move from $62 to up to $78. What's that? That's a $16 move. You're talking about a 25% move in crude basically in just over a month from that low we got at $62 bucks coming up to $80. Bucks. Do you mm -hmm. see, I know you're a long-term bull. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that mm -hmm. that really hasn't changed coming into the new year. But do you see, where do you see some potential resistance? You know, is it 85.41, the highs we have up there from November. Is it $80, uh, a round number? Where, where, where are some numbers on that crude chart right now at 78.21 that you look for? Okay, well, I think that it's very likely that we're going to pierce the $80 level within the, probably the next week or so. Um, now, as far as do I think we're going to have a really accelerated rally to the upside, Probably not, and if we do, I don't think it's going to be sustainable in the sense that I think you're going to start to see a lot of volatility as we cross the 85 pushing the $90 barrel mark. See here, you got to realize is now that we're already at the threshold now. With, if we didn't have inflation at all right now, let's say we were running at 0% inflation for the last two years, the price of gas right now, we're pushing that threshold. Once you start to see $4, 450 gas, you're really going to start to see a lot of people start to make decisions. Now, yeah. if you have $455 gas, you know, I mean, I, I've been saying this for a year. I'm like, you just wait. We're going to get to this area. And overall, over the next couple of years, we will see the $150 level. We're going to be where we were back in the um, you know, early 2000s. The only thing is now we're coupled with inflation. And as we hit this, you got to realize it's going to start to make people make choices. You're going to have a lot. You're going to have a slowdown in the economy. There's, there's not going to be the consumerism going on moving forward with these pressures in the market. I just can't see it. Now, if we get some sort of they start printing money and start if we go into COVID lockdowns again and they have start pumping money into the system short term. Yeah, that's going to hold stuff up. But right now, brother, 
this printing money has to come to an end because we're starting to really get into some serious issues with how the economic numbers. Remember back in the spring of last year, I told you that moving forward for the next couple of years, you can forget about your basic accounting. It's going to be the big economic numbers now that are driving all of the markets, not just the currencies, not just the interest rates. But that's where people are going to be looking for true direction because the market itself is the economies of scales are so out of whack. You got the FANG stocks that are holding up the market. And if you look at the advanced decline ratio, the market's actually in a bear market, you know. So, I mean, yeah. with, those, with, with those variables going on, somehow the rubber band eventually, if it doesn't snap back, it's going to just snap, period. You know, and then we're going to see some very extreme volatility. I mean, you'll probably see... As the, as the market turns, if you will, you know, things happen a lot faster. You'll probably see a $10, $15 slide in the, in the 30 year notes, or a bonds rather, in 10 year notes over the course of like a week or two, you know? And like, but what will that do to the value of the dollar? Well, that's going to give it a lot of strength short term, you know, but it doesn't matter because the buying power of the dollar is still so weak and getting weaker, you know. So it's kind of like a short term little grab. You know, it makes us able to buy stuff from other countries really well. But how are, how are we going to export stuff to the world as the dollar is getting strong? You know what I mean? Yes, yes. I know the number of variables in play, man, as we come into this year sitting at all time highs uh, mm -hmm. and we got three rate hikes probably coming, man. And it is interesting sure. last year, like we were talking about it, pretty remarkable how wrong people got inflation last year. And what I keep reminding myself is that, you know, all the projections this year are almost like a best case scenario, as in the projections from the Fed are that, you know, we're back at 2% by next year for inflation and all those considered. It's kind of like sure. a bull case, best case scenario. Um, mm -hmm. And I just kind of remember where we were last year because it is tough to see all of those influences sure. waning. Um, you know, companies Watch right now CRB, almost Tommy. have, what's that? Watch the CRB, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's gonna be one of your biggest indicators. The commodities, Almost all commodities over the course of 12 months have gone up 50 to 100 percent. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's all you got to look at if you're looking at inflation. I agree, man. Some of the core numbers that we've gotten on these inflationary numbers, Teddy, where they take out, mm -hmm. right, energy and food, staggering yeah. core numbers. And we all know that food and energy are through the roof. So sometimes, man, you just got to use your head, folks. And, and listen, it's right. possible, right? These things can all wane. We're hearing some, I'm hearing some, you know, over the news where it's like, okay, um, supply shortages aren't as bad. Maybe the car companies are, are able to get chips a little bit better. But, man, we got a lot of hurdles to get over for 2022 as we come into the yes, year right now. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Teddy, man, it was great to talk to you. We look forward to quite a Thanks, year in Tommy. 2022. And we come It'll in with, with, you know, the only I'm going to finish it up, Teddy. I got a chart in here, crude and pretty remarkable. Okay. Not a lot of people would remember, man, um, that we sat above 80 bucks to like 100 for like almost four years, man, from the mm -hmm. end of 2010. To almost 2014, 20, to the end of 2015, 2014, we were right. sitting between 80 and right. $100. Mm -hmm. Nothing says we can't get back there for sure. Right. Teddy, man, we appreciate the conversation. We look forward to talking to you next Thanks, week. Tommy. Okay, great. have See a great one. Week.